My dear brothers and sisters, wish you a very fruitful season of Lent. Today, I would like to share with you a few reflections on the theme, Ordinary Goodness and Spiritual Journey. In our day-to-day -day life and in our normal conversation, we use a terminology, this boy is good, this girl is good. He is a good nurtured person, she is a good nurtured person. What is the meaning of that? Being good natured, being good. Maybe we could understand it from the point of view of saying that that person doesn't do any harm to anybody. He does a lot of good. She is very kind. She does not do any violence. He does not in any way spoil the name of other people. He or she has a lot of respect towards the other, another centered person and things of the kind. He or she would be a very peace loving person. He or she is very contributive. All this could be criteria that we could consider for a person who is good, ordinary goodness and spiritual journey. I would like to base myself on the words of the Master in the parable of the talents as response in appreciation to the way in which the talents were used by the first two servants. On his return, when the Master found that they had done well, they had multiplied. They were very contributive in the society. He told them, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have shown you can be faithful in small things. I will trust you with greater. Come, join in your master's happiness. Matthew 25, 21 Being faithful in little things can guarantee our own happiness and that of those others around us. We definitely get the approval of other persons, though we are not looking for approval-seeking behavior or things of the kind. Today, as always, we all live the ordinariness of our day-to-day -day life with its challenges of living our Christian life in a world that is also sufficiently complex. We live in it and we see it also as a mission and as a response. I am a mission, I am a response. We live it as a way of life, a way of living it with a spirit of discernment. For it is an art or a habit of listening attentively to the voice of the spirit and having the courage to make choices in life as a response to the call of Christ to discipleship. And this will bring about in us a way of life in symbolism to a journey towards interior life and deep serenity. Being faithful in little things is the secret of serenity, happiness and also I would put success in life. Many saints have their teaching 
along these lines. St. Francis of Sales speaks of sanctity as attainable for everyone in the state of life to which each one is called by being faithful to the duties of that state of life. Don Bosco had a pedagogy through which he helped the young to enjoy whatever they were doing and he taught them that sanctity is possible in the place where one is and he said learn to do ordinary things in an extraordinary manner. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta says a drop may be only a drop but an ocean is less an ocean if that drop were not to be there. Saint George Maria Scriva says understand it well there is something holy, something hidden in the most ordinary situation and it is up to each one of us to discover it. In the context of the formation of healthy habits, St. Thomas Aquinas comparing, making a comparison of a drop of water falling on a rock, drop by drop, making a mark, he says, the mark on the rock is made not because of the force of the water but because of the constancy of the falling. The little flower speaks of the little way of spiritual infancy which according to her consists of two things confidence and complete abandonment. For her confidence would mean that the perfection of the virtue of hope as also the imitation of the infants in their confidence in their parents. Total abandonment too is not a life of passivity according to her, neither inactivity or laziness. For her, total abandonment is the apex of charity, love. Abandonment is a spirit of participation in the fervor of charity, as she would call it, in spirit and in fact. Abandonment is a fruit of love. All these teachings of these different saints would prove that grace builds on nature. We need to be people who are good at heart, which consists of being faithful as good human beings who can only love and create that spirit of confidence and trust and generate that will to love and live responsibly in the world. Our life is also considered as a journey, ordinary goodness and a spiritual journey. This spiritual journey would consist of the following four elements. 1. Conversion. We all can go through a process of conversion which in some can be very dramatic and in some others it can be very calm, some progressive and at times even something that needs a lot of efforts. In the experience of many people, conversion can be seen as a slow journey from a mediocre state to a situation of fervor and continuous efforts to remain good. Conversion is a movement from a life of indifference to a life of total belongingness, being guided by the Spirit. It is a movement from mediocrity to depth. It is a movement from living a life that makes you live and become a better version of yourself every day. The second stage of this journey is maturation in a virtuous life. This is a fruit or a consequence of conversion and there is growth in virtues. There is that desire to avoid evil and to choose for what is good, noble and it is also a fruit of the process of discernment. In this process, it is very important to take note of the role of the sacrament of reconciliation, making use of the opportunities for spiritual direction and also developing consistent prayerfulness which would bring about a continuous 
maturation in the life of virtue. The third stage is, is the spiritual itinerary that we make. As ordinary human beings, being faithful to the daily duties in our life, this spiritual itinerary is something that we all go through and it has two phases, the ascetical dimension and the mystical dimension. Ascetical dimension means putting away the old man and putting on the new, which is a continuous process. And as a consequence, a person grows in a virtuous life. The mystical phase speaks of the life of continuous union with God. I am aware that I live in the hands of someone who loves me. The person makes efforts towards the same and conversion goes on through the virtuous life of every single person as he and she would go through these two phases, the ascetical dimension and the mystical dimension. Finally, there is also the spirit of endurance which makes the person develop the will and the desire to persevere. Many people can make a beginning, but only sanely persons who take life seriously can make it come to an end. Endurance. The invitation to develop the same sentiments and attitudes, that of Christ, is definitely an invitation to a life of persevering efforts. With these persevering efforts, there are multitudes of ordinary people who live for a cause and at times at very, very painful costs in their life. The struggle for peace, struggle for justice, struggle to love everyone, to include, to develop that inclusive spirituality, the struggle in doing good to needy people at one's personal cost, the efforts people are making in order to alleviate the sufferings of other people. The level of frustration tolerance of so many people who handle daily life in a very mature and balanced way. All these are signs of endurance and perseverance. This spiritual itinerary which starts with conversion, growing into a life of maturing in virtues has to be an itinerary that has to be taken forward with a spirit of endurance. What does it mean to develop ordinary goodness as we go ahead in our spiritual journey? It means that we need to prepare the good ground because grace builds on nature. And we have certain insights, insightful indications about the same in Psalm 24 and Psalm 15. Psalm 24 we pray thus, Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The answer is clear. He whose hands are clean, whose heart is pure, whose soul does not pay homage to worthless things and who never swears to a lie. In Psalm 15 we read, Lord, who shall be admitted to your tent or live on your mountain? The answer is, the man whose way of life is blameless, who always does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart, whose tongue is not used for slander, who does no wrong to his brother or sister, who casts no discredit on his neighbor, who looks with contempt on the reprobate, but honors those who fear the Lord, who stands by his pledge at any cost, does not ask interest on loans and cannot be bribed to victimize the innocent. If a man does all this, nothing can ever shake him. Dear brothers and sisters, very clear indications. We need to be good human beings. We need to prepare the soil so that God's grace will continue to work in us and His will will be done 
always and in all ways. Very clear indications these are to us that we need to be the soil that is conducive for our spiritual growth. The soil has to be prepared. We need to be good and healthy human beings who live with that spirit of balance. Man with clean hands and pure heart. Hands would symbolize actions. Heart would symbolize intention. Both these have to combine intention and action. It will guide us to recognize and fulfill always the will of God. It will guide us in our day-to-day -day life to bank on the positives despite the scars that we experience in our daily life. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to conclude with the words of Confucius which are relevant even today for a very healthy life in the society. These means of ordinary goodness can lead a person to a healthy life, a healthy life in the society and also a healthy spiritual life. It is said that in the state of Lu, in those troubled times, there lived a young man who felt keenly the suffering of the people. He felt the need for a rationalized social order, as he would call it, rationalized social order, and for a system of ethics and morality to guide human relationships. The authorities of the village found that people were fighting among themselves. People were stealing sheep, cattle from each other and there was not so much of an honest life. And as Confucius was, though very young, a very very popular preacher and an effective one at that, they called him to settle things back to normal, to bring back a rationalized, reasonable social order. And he gave them a talk. The important part of the talk, it consists of the following. He told them to bring back peace, order in their life. He said, the role of life is to be found within yourself. Ask yourself constantly, what is the right thing to do? Beware of ever doing that which you are likely sooner or later to repent of having done. It is better to live in peace than in bitterness strife. It is better to live, believe in your neighbors than to fear and distrust them. The superior man does not wrangle. He is firm but he is not quarrelsome. He is sociable but he is not clannish. The superior man sets good example to his neighbors. He is considerate of their feelings and of their property. Consideration towards for the other is a basis of good life, a good society. Feel kindly towards everyone. Be friendly and pleasant among yourselves. Be generous and fair. Dear brothers and sisters, ordinary goodness that will help us to live a healthy spiritual life as we journey ahead. Let us always ask ourselves, what is the loving thing to do? And the answer will definitely help us to do the loving thing. And the master would tell each one of us to, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in little things. Enter into the joy of the master. Wish you all a continuous, fruitful experience of the season of Lent.